was a time in my life where I didn't have a choice and I knew that I was not gonna have breath in my lungs. So when I, when I sing this song, it gives me a moment, it gives me a time to remember how I did not have to get up that morning, how God was the one that, that blew breath in my lungs to give me the ability to get up and do his will. How can we not give him gratitude? How can I not wake up every morning thinking about how I can advance his kingdom? He allows us, he allows us to get up in the morning because he's not done with us yet. There's still something we need to do for his kingdom. Guys, you know I get really excited when I see this trough here, right? I get really, really excited. I, I want to come up and do tithes and offerings, so let's, let's just put up the tithes and offerings, right? But there's no way we can get up here and be in God's presence. And no matter how we felt, no matter who we offended yesterday, no matter how angry we've gotten this week, we took the moment today to be in his presence and to lay it all at his feet. We laid it all at his feet. As a matter of fact, I give, I give thanks to those who checked it at the door and didn't allow themselves to bring it in here and, and consume them with anger and bitterness or unforgiveness and distraction. Because you know what we come for? We come so that we can get edified. We come so that we can show the Lord that we are, that he is worthy. So I remember when I was getting uh, baptized and I get really emotional, but I'm not gonna get emotional today because my kids are in the building. Uh, <laughs> um, and I would think about the uh, baptism that I had to do. And I remember pastor, was the one who ministered to me to get baptized. I had gone, I had become a Christian. Well, I had accepted the Lord at 12 years old, but no one ever talked to me about baptism. And as we do the tithes and offerings, um, <clears throat> we do this with a cheerful heart, please. Um, this, is, this is between you and the Lord. And so just as for the sake of time, I did want to share that I remember inviting a bunch of people inviting a bunch of people to my celebration. And I didn't know then, but I know now that there's some things that when we start our relationship with the Lord, we have to sometimes start that alone. And the people who surround you when you make decisions with the Lord are the ones that he has called you for that season. Those are the ones that, no, you don't confess all your sins to them, but those are the ones that you pray with. Those are the ones that you tell them, I'm struggling, I need prayer. Those are the ones that you tell them, you ask them, do you need prayer? And so I remember, I really wanted Pastor to be at my baptism that day, because we were friends at the time. He liked me, but he didn't say he liked me. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And so he ministers to me. Uh, and hey look the faster you do the tithes and offerings the faster I get off of here and so then he ministers to me and I felt kind of bad because I said I really want you to come to my baptism and he said something very wise to me he said if I showed up at, at your baptism people would think that you're getting baptized because of me and I said well it is because of you because I was a babe in Christ it is because of you because you brought Christ into my life and then he says, no, I meant like people will stumble because of it. So it's better I don't go. And he has his own church at the time. And I had my own church. If, you know, let's call it a church. And so I remember going into the baptism and reminding myself and the words that he said. He said, this is a grave where all the things that didn't belong to you, all the things that the world put on you, all the things that the curses that have been put on you that you did not ask for, everything that you have done goes into this grave of water. And when I come out, I become a new creation. Where else can we go to become a new creation? Where else can I go? Who else in this world can give me a second chance to live the life full of joy, full of love. Where else? Now, I don't
don't know about you guys, but this always reminds me of my baptism. And I cry every time somebody gets in this water because it reminds me that God gives us another opportunity. He gives us chances over chances to become what he wanted us to be. He created us to be a certain thing. He created us to be somebody for a reason, for a purpose, without fears, with nothing holding you back, with courage and strength. And I remember telling God, well, you know, I haven't really been a nice person. And God gave me this scripture, John 13, 35. And he says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciple. If you have love for one another. And what he was saying was, this is how you demonstrate the love that you have received from me. Don't worry about what people thought about you in the past. Don't worry about their perception of you yesterday. Because every morning you get up with repentance, you have a chance to love one another. Love God first and then love others. Don't be a doormat. Don't be a doormat. But use opportunities to exhort one another in love so that we can get better. Because sharpen iron sharpens iron. And that's what God made us to be. We have the word of God to tell us who we are. Every single day, he gives us this word to show us who we can be. So we can decide not to be nasty. We can, be, we can decide not to be angry. We can decide not to be unforgiving. We can decide to love one another and to demonstrate the love of Christ to others by our behavior. I was not a nice person. I could bring you 10 people that can give testify. And I'm not going to show you who they are. But all I'm saying is that he was the only one that gave me this chance to be different. To be the one that he made me to be. So as we did the tithes and offerings, I just want to pray over everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray a new beginning for everyone, Lord God. I pray a new beginning for those who are going to get in this water and leave the past behind them. I'm also gonna pray, Lord God, in unison with my, pe with my people, with my church family, Lord God. Look at your people, look at your children, Lord. Look at our hearts. Look at the things that we wanna change. Today, we, we thank you and we appreciate you and we come with a spirit of gratitude. We come with a spirit of gratitude to let you know, Lord God, that we're gonna try every day for the rest of our lives to be the one that you have asked us to be, to love one another and to demonstrate the love that you have put in us, the forgiveness that you have graced us with, Lord. We did nothing to deserve it, but you graced us with it because you chose to love us and we're choosing to be more like you. We're not perfect and we fall short. But Father, I pray for everyone, Lord God, that is part of this church and everyone that is in the universal church of God. We pray, Lord God, over everyone on this altar. We pray for the musicians. We pray for the singers, Lord God. We pray for conviction to come over our hearts, Lord, over the ministers, over the leaders, over the members, Lord God, over the children. Let the conviction of your spirit come to us. Let us not hide from your love. Let us not hide from your correction, but let us accept you, Lord God. Let us to learn from you. So, Father, we pray for these tithes and offerings, a special prayer, a, sp a prayer of prosperity spiritually, Lord God, a prayer of pro prosperity in faith so that you can increase our faith, Lord God. So, Father, we pray, Lord, that the word of God that you give us today, that your spirit be upon our pastor. We pray upon his life, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to edify him, anoint him from the top of his head to the to the bottom of his feet lord god pray lord god we all pray lord jesus for our pastor we pray for encouragement we pray for wisdom we pray for solutions we pray lord god any away from any distractions that might take him away lord god from focusing on your kingdom lord oh father i pray all those things upon this church father we doubt we cast down any distractions that try to take us from your from your strategies, Lord God, and your will for our life. You're the author and you're the finisher, Lord. You're the author and the finisher, and we say yes to you. We say yes to the pen that continues to write for us, Lord God. 
We say yes to the writings of, of the, the book of life, Lord God, where you have written out our life. We say yes to your will, no matter how much our flesh doesn't want to, Lord God. Today we say yes to your will and to your ways, Lord. We say yes to your thoughts, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord God, a conviction over our lives that we may be able to, to be less judgy, Lord God. Let us not judge our brothers and sisters, Lord God, but let us judge ourselves. Look in the mirror. Let us look in the mirror so that we can see the things that you want us to change for ourselves, Lord. Oh, Father, increase our finances so that we can expand the kingdom. Trust us, Lord God. Look at our hearts and look at our strategies, Lord. Trust us with the finances, Lord. Only you know. Only you know who you can trust, Lord God. And we thank you in advance for the blessings, Lord. Show yourself real. Show yourself real in our lives today, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that everyone that, everyone that gets baptized today may change their perspective. The enemy is out to sift us as we, but he has no power over us. Oh, I can't get an amen. Everybody's too busy. Everybody's too busy posting our videos online. Hey, hey, what did I say? He has no power over our lives. He has no power over our choices. He has no power over our relationships. He has no power over our children. He has no power. He has no power over our finances. If God has called you to consecrate, if he called you to, to, to continue to fast, if he called you to pray, to intercede, stop acting like he's not talking to you. He's talking to you. This is not an exhortation of, hey, you're not doing well. This is actually a conversation that God is telling us as a people. There's things that he requires of us. Stop ignoring him. 2024 is coming real soon, guys. Let us not be that double-minded person to receive nothing from the Lord. If we want spiritual prosperity, let us submit to the obedience that he's requiring of us. I know, I know. That's one of the hurtful uh, uh, claps. Those are the ones like, oh, I don't want to do this. Okay, we're going to do this. And I know we're taking time. I know we're taking time. But there's something that the Lord wants to say. By your behavior. By your behavior. This is how people know that you are Jesus' disciple. When you can exhort in love. When you can love one another. When you cannot judge each other. When you can forgive. Even though they were wrong. Even though a person has offended you forgive one another you know why because the forgiveness is for you is for you healing is ours the power is ours it's not the person that's holding us back with the pain the healing is ours so as we do these tithes and offerings that pastor comes up I know we prayed for tithes and offerings but if you have something in your heart that you felt that you've been ignoring God, I want you to raise your hands so we could pray together. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being honest. Thank you. Thank you. It takes courage. It takes courage to serve God. It takes courage not to have fear. It takes courage to change. It takes courage to do things that you don't know, the unknown. It takes courage. So we're going to pray for courage. Father, today, of all days, we've prayed for tithes. We've prayed for offerings. We've prayed for our family. We've prayed for so many things, Lord. And this is not a wish, a, a wish list, Lord God. But today, in your presence, Lord, we pray that, we, that you will give us the courage to do your will to simply to have the courage to do your will, to walk righteously, to decide and choose righteously. Father, today is the first day of the rest of our lives. 
today we could be the things that you have caused us to be. Today we are going to listen to your thoughts and your strategies. So we forgive us, Lord, if we've ignored your calling. Forgive, forgive us if we've ignored the, the, the task that you have asked us to do, whether it's to minister to someone on the line, on the shopping line in front of us, or, or to consecrate, or to, or to pray for someone, or to forgive someone, or to have a conversation with someone. Forgive us, Lord, that we were not faster in the task that you have asked us to do. But you are a forgiving God, and you give grace. So I pray that you give us grace and courage to do the things that you have asked us to do. Look at the hands that are raised. We repent for not doing it quickly, Lord God, but today's a new day and that's what it is. That's what this is. Living for you is always having a new day, being a new creation, having a new opportunity to do the right thing. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. Give us a word today. Give us a word that's going to carry us until tomorrow, Lord. Give us a word that's going to wake us up in the morning with such a hunger that we want to praise you and put on worship music on the way to work and just pray for people, Lord God, people that have hurt us, people that love us, people that don't love us, Lord God. Give us, Lord God, the courage and the grace to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There's a song, we might sing it later. Uh, it's by Jesus Culture. And the chorus of this song says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. There is an atmosphere that we create whenever we worship God. There's an atmosphere that's created when you are by yourself. Uh, you can be on an airplane, on a bus, you can be in your bedroom, wherever you are, and you open up the Word of God. You create an atmosphere. And if that atmosphere is conducive for growth, you will feel the Spirit of God overwhelm that moment right there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If there's ever a way to fight your battles, it is to prepare the atmosphere. So I want us to take a moment now before we go into the word to prepare the atmosphere for what the Lord is getting ready to do. Maybe you today don't need a breakthrough, but if you have love in your heart, then you would at least be sensitive to know that perhaps the person next to you or the one in front of you, the one behind you needs a breakthrough. If we can just be selfless and give opportunity for the spirit of God to come and bless somebody else, and, and say, maybe silver and gold have I not. Maybe I don't have to give you, but what I can give you in abundance is my cooperation and my hunger for the Holy Spirit. Amen? And let that fill the room. Father, we come in this moment and we praise your name. We lift you above our agenda. We lift you above our desires, our cares, and our wants. And we serve you, Lord God, in this moment selflessly we create lord god an environment that is conducive for the landing of the holy spirit that you may dwell in our hearts and for those of god who don't know you well that they may be fast forwarded today into what it is the relationship with the father i thank you lord because you have revealed difficult things to the minds of those who have submitted to you things that take years of maturity to understand, you'll reveal them today in the name of Jesus. And I believe, Lord God, for supernatural growth in the mind of the believer, of those that are submitted to hear what the Spirit says to the church. We honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Praise God. <laughs> On your way down, give somebody a high five and greet them and let them know you're happy to see them. Welcome them to the service. We welcome all of you who are watching online. Amen. God bless you. I see uh, Stephanie Cruz and I see Grace and Brother Mo watching from Colombia and our sister uh, Catherine and Sister Baez and praise the Lord. I see Mari Luz. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Amen.
Who else I see? Cloudy here. Yeah, some of y'all in here. That's good. Yeah, let's keep that going. And if you're in the house, say amen. amen. Make some noise. Yeah, amen means I agree. I'm here. I agree. I'm with it. I'm, my mind is here. My mind is clear. I can listen and I can understand and comprehend what the Lord has for me. If you would open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 36, I'm going to read Ezekiel 36 out of the ESV, um, verse 26 and 28. It is God's desire to dwell inside that which he created, mainly the race that he has decided to create in his own image. In, in the Bible, there is a man called Job, and if you have uh, the opportunity to read it, if you haven't read it, you're missing a, a, a tremendous story. In these 40-something chapters, you will see a man that had everything reduced down to nothing, gone to his lowest point of depression, to the point where he had every type of depression. He had emotional distress because he lost his children. He had the distress of his health. He had the distress of his wife almost abandoning him and telling him to just uh, forget God and die. And, and for moments of his life, death seemed like a good idea. Uh, it seemed like the solution. He cursed the day that he died, uh, all because he was attacked spiritually. And this attack not only led to spiritual, but it was physical ramifications. But at the end of his story, before the Lord uh, has pity on him, as Job is having pity on himself, he starts to talk to God and explain to him that perhaps it was a bad idea to bring him. And almost is questioning God's uh, creative abilities and what he was, did you know what you were doing, what you were thinking about it, you know, me having all this misery in my life. And he says something that is uh, very chilling. He says, Job, I want you to stand there and I'm, you're going to listen to everything I have to say. He says, I want you to stand there like a man. In other words, get ready for what I'm about to tell you. And he didn't say, I pity you. I feel sorry for you. You know, maybe, maybe I come back uh, and, I, and I'll do it all over again and I'll give you a second chance where your life is much more smoother. He doesn't say any of that. All he says is, where were you? Where were you when I told the sea to come this far and no further? He starts to ask him questions that there's no way he can answer because he never even thought on that level. And sometimes we were, we were sharing uh, with the young adults. You any young adults in the house say, make some noise? <laughs> we were sharing with them that when you handle issues up here in the supernatural, these natural problems seem insignificant. And so the Lord starts to work with Job on his mindset on what's happening up here. See, Job was thinking about everything down here, woe is me, and his problems and the situations and circumstances, but he had forgot to think on the level that is higher than whatever he's going through. And the Lord started to heal him by bringing him higher. Where were you when I, when I started to, to, to create the cosmos and the stars and, and all these things that he made him think so much bigger, higher, that his life seemed insignificant, that by the time the Lord had finished rebuking him for about three chapters, he said, I was blind and now my eyes can see. I can see. And so I want to invite you that if you really want to move of God, you have to uh, be open to thinking on a higher level. You have to be open to thinking above the natural, what is called supernatural. It is superior to the natural. That's why we call it supernatural. You have your natural problems in the world where bills are issues and, the, and, and, the, and where people think about you as an issue and, and what the world, the direction of the world and where it's going to and all the microscopic issues, these things become huge to us because we are in it and our face is dug into the ground. But once God lifts you up to a supernatural level and you start thinking on that level, all of a sudden there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because if everything is good on this level, okay, let me tell you something, problems look different on the penthouse floor. Everything looks different. When you look down, the whole street looks different. Every, the higher you go, the less significant things on the ground there are. Because your mind is higher. And that's what I believe the Lord wants us to do today. 
Ezekiel 36, verse 26 to 27 says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit and, and, and I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful uh, and, and be careful to obey my rules. Not only does he promise that he's going to give us something, but he uh, he is describing to us what is the use, the primary use of him giving you him is so that you can understand him. I will cause you to walk in my statutes because when you experience God, you start to get hooked to it. See, the enemy, every trick that the enemy has is something that is old, okay? It isn't something new. When, when the enemy uses things to entice you, he is taking that from God because what God does, he does not use tricks to entice you. He uses authenticity. And when you feel authentic love, authentic care, someone who cares for you with such a deep love that there is nothing in it for them other than loving you. Now, this is rare to find in this world. And so when you finally find it, you develop an appetite for real love. Anybody got an appetite for real love? I will give you this. He's prophesying this. The Holy Spirit has not hit the church yet uh, in the book of Acts. We're talking in the Old Testament. Look at what else he says in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Isaiah 11, 2, still reading in the ESV. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. See, this was the prophecy that the one who was coming would have all these things. Jesus is spirit. We saw him manifest in the flesh, but John had explained to us that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And you wonder, how can I access God? You simply reverse engineer what happened. The word became flesh. And then the flesh carried out his mission and the flesh became word and now the word can be in you. Which means the more you read his word, the more he will connect with you on a spiritual level, on a supernatural level. Because it is superior to the natural. It means you are going to develop power, you're going to develop confidence and senses that you never had before and, and will prove it in a moment. In Matthew chapter 5, during his Sermon on the Mount, uh, he does plenty of Beatitudes, what are called the Beatitudes. Blessed are this, and blessed are, are the meek, and blessed are the lowly, uh, blessed are the, the, the meek. And then he goes to verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are you hungry for righteousness? Now let's explain what righteousness is. Because righteousness is not just a desire to do right. Okay, That is one version of or one phase of righteousness. But real righteousness is you have the desire to walk in a certain way. See, there's, there is a way that we can walk where it's a shortcut way, the crooked way. Like Biggie said, the ski mask way. Okay, there's a corrupt way for us to walk when you want to make the money, when you want to get your family to the next level. There's certain shortcuts that you might want to take. But every now and then, there's a righteousness that rises up even in the most corrupt criminal that says, I, I wonder if I can go clean. I wonder if I can go legit. If I can just not have to watch my back. If I can just not, if I can make this money without worrying about repercussions and, the, and, and cops coming after me and people snitching. Even in, even in crime, there's a desire for righteousness at some point. I want to do right. I, I want to stop looking over my shoulder. Okay, it, it, it happens in children. When children recognize, I keep getting yelled at for being disobedient and for doing things wrong. There's a desire in a child that says, what if I just didn't get yelled at for a week? 
There's a desire for righteousness. There's a desire for righteousness as you get older. What if I can just do things right and stop making mistakes and if I can just stop procrastinating? Anybody ever want to stop procrastinating? Yes. Anybody ever want to say, I, I wish I could just focus. I wonder if I can have a focus that would last me 12 months of extreme focus, doing everything right. I, I, wish, I wish I could get my food right and I wish I was in gluttonous and, and, and I hope that, that I can do better. Anybody want to do better? We're getting close to the, to the new year and everybody desires righteousness. I want to get right. I want to walk right. Okay, that is the first element that you're going to need if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They that hunger and thirst for righteousness, these people shall be filled. So whenever the desire for righteousness comes, you have a decision. Push it away or draw it closer. Many times because we don't know how to walk in righteousness, we reject righteousness. Because we don't know how this is going to work. Sometimes we're afraid of change because we don't know if we can keep it up. I have seen people come to church, give their lives to Jesus, and after they give that to Jesus, in a couple of days, a spirit of doubt enters them where they just don't think they can keep this up. I don't know if I can keep up this praying like that pastor's talking about. I don't know if I can keep reading my word. I got a whole life that I already dedicated a certain way. I don't know if I can stop all this stuff. And the doubt will set in. Okay? Because why is it doubt? Because it's a lie. It's not that, you're, it's not that God wants you to be like me. He doesn't want you to be like somebody else. He wants you to be like you. So what does it look like when you are right with God? Never mind me. Because whatever you think my relationship with God is, it is not what you think because it is a private relationship. And in the privacy, there are issues that are being dealt with on every single day basis. So while we look at each other being happy, we, we're, 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 we're like ESPN. We are highlighting the slam dunks. We're highlighting the, the, all the home runs and we're highlighting the touchdowns. But what we're not showing you is the practice. What we're not showing you is that when, when, when he told us to do 10 reps, we only went to five. Hello, somebody. We're not showing you all the times that we missed. All the times that we came up short. Okay, we're, we only kind of experience each other on our highlights. How's everything? Praise the Lord. I got a testimony. You got to hear this, what the Lord has done. What you ain't telling them is the nine times that this stuff didn't work. You're just telling me the one time it worked. Because that would be a strange conversation. How you doing, brother? Well, you know, I prayed twice. Nothing happened, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know if I'm, if I'm getting this thing right. I don't know if I prayed wrong. But I don't know if it's a lesson or I'm just dumb. I don't know what it is, but ain't nothing happening right now. Check on me in a couple of days. But that's not exactly motivational. And so because of our desire to be positive, a lot of times we hide all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. Okay. Now, here's the reality is there's always going to be some behind the scenes. You will never find a team that makes it to a championship level without them having to suffer in the offseason. Suffer during practice. Suffer while no one is watching. There is a lot of preparation. And so there's a lot of trial and error. But these moments that you have with God that are in your practice moments, in your alone time, that is your offseason. That is your training day. It doesn't matter how ugly it is. It doesn't matter how hard it was for you to read that Bible. There is time that you're like, I'm going to read this Bible. And then you get distracted. Well, I, I, after this episode, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Wait, wait, that is, next episode is real good. I'm going to get into the word right after that. And then you're about to get into the word. Then you remember, oh, I got to wash the car. Then you start getting distracted. You wash the car. You wash the dishes. You become like a kid in high school that you were, that right before you did your homework, you had to clean the room and you had to organize everything. And then I'm going to get to do it because you had to set everything right. Some of y'all are doing the same habits 20 years later. So you have to, that is a real fight. And you have to fight your high school habits your, your grammar school habits, you got to fight them just to get yourself to read the word. 
And it is a real struggle. I'm telling you the struggle so you don't think that something's wrong with you when you go home and your body's like, I don't want to do this. It sounded good on Sunday, right? I was really excited about it. But then when, when the normal, regular week comes where you have nobody to push you, no one else is saying amen, and all the voice you hear is yours, it's hard. But can you win without exercise? You can't win in sports without exercise. You have to practice. And in the spirit, you also have to do the same thing. Here's what I'm here to help you with. You don't have to perfect being good at the practice. You don't even have to worry about how good and how consistent I'm going to be. Because all that is going to vary. Sometimes you wake up and it's just sunny out and you walk outside and you just feel good and your spirit feels good and your vitamins and, and you ate something that made you feel real, real great. Maybe you had like a super antioxidant salad and now you're on top of the world, right? And you just finished eating your, your vitamin gummies and whatever all that stuff was, your vitamin C and your B, and now you feel like reading the word of God. But then that two o'clock time hit, that nap time, you know what I'm talking about, after lunch, <laughs> And you had coffee with a little too much sugar, and now you went, way. There's going to be differences between you in a crash, wanting to worship the Lord, and you in an uptime, trying to worship God. Here's what you have to maintain. You have to maintain the hunger. Because the behavior is hard to keep up, but the hunger is all up here. Hunger has nothing to do with whether you're tired. Hunger has to do with a desire. See, you, if you have a dream that is worth dreaming, that dream is good when you're tired, and that dream is good when you have energy. Hello, somebody. If you have desire to take your family to the next level, there's a desire in you. You can be dead tired. You can be asleep, and your dreams will speak to you. So whether you're energized or not, there is a part of you that can stay excited. And I'm talking to that part of you today. Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. But do not disconnect yourself from the appetite. Don't disconnect yourself from it because sometimes we feel like hypocrites because our behavior doesn't match our theology. We believe in God, but we behave in a certain way. Because our flesh still has desires. And the problem is these desires are strong because you were born with them. Hello, somebody. And these desires can betray you. Hello. I ain't talking about church. I'm talking about sometimes you will want to do something not even church related. Something that is good and you're like, you know what? This is Saturday. I can really get ahead. This is the day I need to organize my closet and do all of my laundry. Good idea, yes? Yes. And then your body betrays you. Oh, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, this bed feels so good. And all of a sudden, your mind said, this is a great idea. And in your mind, you saw yourself like a, like a busy bee, just moving boxes. And, and you saw it, you pre-realized it, but your body's like, nope. Because biology is brutal. Biology is brutal. It does not care what you said. It feels what it's going to feel. But when you make it a habit of, of building your spiritual appetite, your spirit will get so strong that it will tell your flesh what to do. And even in the moment of your worst physical moment you can be in pain you can want to procrastinate there's something on the internet that says get up right now and your spirit takes over your body and even if you are afraid you will be encouraged even if you feel doubt you erase doubt because when the spirit hits you it bypasses the flesh you might there's certain things that don't bypass the flesh desires of the heart don't bypass the flesh Okay? But when there is a spiritual power inside of you, it bypasses even what you feel. It gets you excited on a clean level. Okay, I know some of y'all know what that means. 
Go to Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. Look at this instance. Actually, we'll go to verse... Uh, Go to 37. Wish I had time, otherwise I, you could read the whole chapter when you get a chance, but just to summarize, Peter and John were preaching the word of God, and at the first time that they preached uh, in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 were saved. In chapter 4, the 5,000 people gave their life to Jesus, and they had turned the city upside down. The rulers of the city grabbed them and arrested them. And they had forbid them to preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And in verse 27, it says, uh, For truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, but Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats. And grant your servants to continue to speak the word, your word, with all boldness. And while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with all boldness. They were praying because they had experienced a heightened level of mental distress. They were giving their whole life for the gospel, preaching it, and while they're doing a good thing, a bad thing happens. They get arrested for it. And this is a habit that's going to happen. They would grab them. Sometimes they would flog them, which means they would get whipped physically, physically punished for doing something good. And instead of them complaining and saying, rain down a uh, fire to come upon the authorities, they, they, they just simply said, Lord, the world ain't going to change, so you're going to have to make us stronger. They didn't pray for the whole world to accept Jesus. They prayed for them to be strong so they can continue to get to the people that have no choice but to accept them because there's already a connection in their heart. And sometimes we need to copy this model and say, Lord, Help me to bypass what's going on on the outside. I cannot change the world. I can't change who hates me on my job. I can't change the supervisor who's plotting against me. I can't change the customer who, who's trying to mess up my business. I can't, I can't do anything about the skills I don't have. But Lord, in here, make me bold. Boldness is the prayer to bypass your fear and do it anyway. It takes boldness to praise God in public because your flesh wants to do everything except embarrass itself. You need boldness to talk about Jesus in public. You need boldness to preach the word of God because there has to be a chip in you that switches from I care to I don't care. And when that switch turns on, you don't care what people think about anymore because you have something greater inside of you. I'm telling you, you can't win big if you're constantly worried about what people think. You can't because what people think will make you sick, okay, because there are sick people. You know there's people who will not like you and there's nothing you can do about it because the reason that they don't like you isn't even a real reason. On the same note, there are people who like you because they don't know you. Because there's some people that say, oh, you know, I, 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 now that I got to know you, I like you. There's some people that after they get to know you, they go, oh, I didn't think you were like this. I liked you better from far. So don't fall in love with the people who fall in love with you. And don't take it so personal when people don't like you. Because misunderstandings will happen on either way. So there has to be something that rises in you that says, I don't, I don't care to get boggled down with people's opinions 
because I know that on a greater level, if I'm pleasing God, those who want to connect to God will connect to me. Because what good is it for you to receive me and you don't want to know nothing about my God? I don't need this relationship. You like me, but you don't like my God? We don't need to keep talking. What, what good is it? What good is it? I'm not helping you. You're not helping me. Go to, go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. This is what the Lord had promised. He said, but you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You see, when they prayed for boldness, they, they are praying in agreement with what the Lord already set out. If you want a prayer answered, pray in alignment with what Jesus has already prayed for you. Because what you're doing is saying, Lord, uh, do what you said you were going to do. Do what you already said. You already made presidents for this. You already made a statue for this. I'm calling on what you already said. This is why you need to know the word of God. And when you pray the word of God, you are praying, reciting back to God. Lord, this is what you said, that you will give us boldness. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. So it is righteous for you to say, Lord, I feel fearful. Lord, I feel like weak, but, but I'm going to pray for that boldness, the power that you gave us. You told the disciples, and I'm a disciple, that when the Holy Spirit comes, that we will be witnesses. It means I'm going to get rid of my fears. I'm going to get rid of my fears. I'm going to be your witness. Now, what is it going to take for someone to be a witness when they're internal? They don't like to talk to people. They're shy. That means there's going to be a total transformation in your life. Okay, You're going to, all the stuff that you used to be shy about is no longer going to bother you. Hello, somebody. You might be the person that is so conservative, the person that is so kept to yourself, and then all of a sudden you start getting used to having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You will run around this church and not care what nobody thinks about because you will be taken over. The Holy Spirit will overtake you. And it's such a good feeling to not pay attention to your fears. It is such a good feeling to get beyond yourself. Especially those who, who are, you're, you're really, really tight. And you just want to look cool all the time. Y'all know the cool worshipers? They just be. He's bobbing back and forth. Like you're at the party, hanging on the wall, just praising and worshiping, chilling. Because God forbid you raise your elbows to your ears. Oh my. I'm going to get all uncomfortable. I'm going to wrinkle my shirt and all this kind of stuff. When the Holy Spirit hits, when a genuine hit of the Holy Spirit, you do not care if you have makeup, heels. You don't care how well put together you are. It's like fire shut up in your bones. And he said, I can't help it but to worship him. I can't help it but to open up my mouth. I can't help to say what I have seen and felt in my heart. That's what it's like. Amen. Let's, let's go to, I want to show you some other things. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Look at this. He writes to the church, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. It means the word got to keep living. You have to keep refilling yourself with word. Refilling yourself with word. See, good behavior doesn't come first. Filling comes first. Okay, how do I even know what God wants if I haven't heard what he wants? I'm just guessing now. We can all guess, well, God doesn't want me to sin, but where does he want you to start? You know, there's a lot of things you got to let go, 
But what's most important for him today? Because once you start getting so preoccupied with all the things you got to cut out of your life, you become preoccupied with change that you cannot do by yourself. And, and you put the first things last and the last things first. So there, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put it to you plainly so you can understand. Some of you who are super spiritual might not agree, but I'm going to say it anyway. You might still be struggling with drug abuse. And the Lord will fill you with his spirit because you are filled with also a desire to do drugs and a desire to know the Lord more. You cannot get rid of the first issue unless you master your second desire. You will have desires in the flesh, but it doesn't mean that it's going to kill your desire for God. Okay, there's a, there's a saying in Spanish that we say, un clavo saca otro clavo. Yeah? One nail drives out the other nail. You, you might have something that's stuck in you right now, but you're going to have to work on the second thing to drive out the first thing. And so it is possible for you to have a life that's completely disordered that people are not going to approve of, but you can fill yourself with the Spirit of God. He will allow it. Hello, somebody. Is there a witness in the house? Yeah. There's a witness in the house that, that, that while you have some shady issues, God still filled you. While you weren't ready to give up everything, God still filled you. While you were still not perfect, he still filled you. Because he's not looking for perfection. He knows that the flesh is imperfect. That's why he died for you. He's not blind to the fact that you got issues. What he's saying is, do, if you give me a chance... And you open up space for me, which I know you have because I created you. I will drive out the darkness from the inside out. We don't have a God that's interested in driving out darkness from the outside of you, commanding things. Okay, you're not Lazarus in the grave where Jesus is standing out saying, come out. Okay, he promised to be on the inside of you. To dwell within. And your desire to dwell within. Now, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. But it's possible for you to have a desire to sin and a desire to have God. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Tell the truth. <laughs> Don't let the devil accuse you of hypocrisy when you're simply struggling. It is possible for you to want to be rich. And for you to provide for your family and overspend on sneakers. It's possible. It sounds stupid. You should be saving money for your retirement. And you should be putting money in your Roth IRA and all these kind of things. But something in you says, I want financial stability and I also want to blow this cash. So if we are that bipolar, then why can't we not believe that we want the spirit of God while we also want these other things? But here's the difference between overspending and wanting to save money that those desires both go nowhere. When you die, you will not keep the money that you saved. And whatever you overspend is irrelevant. So all of these are little issues. But once you invite the Holy Spirit into your life, he starts to take over. And it is a hostile takeover. It is a takeover that once it hits you, it starts to attack these other desires. It starts to attack. First thing the Holy Spirit attacks is unforgiveness. It attacks unforgiveness. You know why the Holy Spirit attacks unforgiveness? Because you start getting allergic reaction to holding grudges. Because you start realizing the more I hold you, the less space there is for him. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go to have more space for God. Yeah, this is the truth. You want to be filled so much with him that you start to wake up to the fact, I'm holding people hostage. I don't even like them. I don't, I don't even like you in my heart, but I'm holding a grudge because you owe me something. But the more God fills me, the less I feel 
Like I need what they owe me. You owe me an apology, but I'm satisfied. You owe me something, but, I, but this right here satisfied my hunger so much that I don't need anything else. Okay, there's some of us who we, we can separate our appetites. We need a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't need anything. I remember one time I have a nephew, his name was Elijah, and he was staying over in one of the brethren's house. And so he had eaten, uh, they had ordered pizza, and, they, and he ate pizza to his fill. And then finally, the pizza was over, and they brought out the cookies. And this kid complained, I can't eat no more. It's too much pizza. I can't eat no more. It's too much. And then they brought out the, uh, they, they brought out the chips ahoy. And all of a sudden, the kid says, I'll take three, three cookies. And they said, I thought you was full. He said, I was full of pizza. <laughs> but I ain't full of this. Because we can have different hungers inside of us, yes or no? But when the Holy Spirit comes, you don't have a need for anything else. All of a sudden, you don't need people's apologies. You don't need their fake apologies. You know, I'm sorry if I ever did anything to you, which I can't really remember, but I just want to say it to get out of here. You know those fake apologies? You're like, just keep the apology. Just keep it. I don't need it. I'm already satisfied. Because I was wanting the apology so I can feel balance in my life. I was wanting the apology so I can feel justice. I wanted people who did me dirty to fix it so I can feel like I'm worth something, that my time is not a big waste. So guess what happens when the Holy Spirit fills you? You feel validated. You feel value. God chose me to dwell inside of me? And all he wants is a clean slate to rest. I'm going to let go of stuff. I need space for this. Never mind all these little issues. I'm dealing on a higher level right now. Psalm 34 verse 1. David said of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and He went away and he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to talk about this all the time. I will let it manifest because I want to build the hunger inside of me. You see, when you start getting closer to the presence of God, it starts changing things. Even the music that you listen to. You just don't feel, it's not that you're going to go to hell because you listen to it. It just disturbs the equilibrium of the spirit of God inside of you. So something in you say, I just don't want to listen to that right now. I ain't saying it's bad and it can be positive, but, but my ears have developed a hunger and I got to chase this thing because I feel like it's a muscle that wants to get developed. So I just want to hear this type of music. I just want to hear this type of conversation. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, people saying nonsense bothers you now. Okay? And jokes that, that are inappropriate, you just, you tell me, I just don't want, I don't want to hear that today. Because they're messing up with your, and I want to say spiritual high, but it is a spiritual high. Okay? And, and y'all, whoever got high, maybe the two of you that are in here. The worst thing that someone can do is come and blow it for you. (laughs) So it's more than two of you. I see. I see what just happened right there. (laughs) Praise God. Go to go to second Chronicles. I think I'll end with this second Chronicles chapter five. Verse 13 and 14. There is, there is a desire that we need to have to build this appetite and this hunger for God. And at the same time, God himself has a desire to be with his people, to fill them, 
Now, I want I wanted to read something so we can see. We are reading um, right now where Solomon is dedicating the opening of the temple. Okay, God is. I'm sorry, his inauguration. Um, and the Ark of the Covenant has been through battles. It has gone back and forth in, in, in custody. And now it's back in the hands of Israel. And they are worshiping God. And it says, And it was the duty of the trumpeters and the singers to make themselves heard in unison, in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise of the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Can you imagine that, that we get into a point where the Holy Spirit hits his room so much that a cloud descends on this place and we cannot even sing. See, many of you have not experienced that part yet where, where the Holy Spirit hits you and there's no music and there's no one preaching and no one getting you excited because you have so much residual glory inside of your heart that you can just be walking out of nowhere. You parked your car, walk into your house and all of a sudden it, it, it's almost like you are flammable. You know what it means to be flammable? It means you, you, the spirit of God is so on you, you are drenched in it that all it takes is one thought for you to go, ooh. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now. All it takes is one thought, just, just one reminder of what God has done, and there's a glory that fills you. Just like they prayed in Acts chapter 4, they prayed for boldness, and as they prayed, there was a pause. And this pause has so much weight on it. And all of a sudden, it, 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 it'll hit you like this. You'll be praying and praying God and praying and praying and praying and developing this hunger for righteousness, and all of a sudden, there'll be a quiet and in that quiet, he speaks. And in that speaking, he will resolve years of trauma that happened over your life. Damages from your childhood that no psychologist can handle. His glory will fix it. It'll fix years of damage, years of abuse. If you have been sexually molested, he will heal it in a moment. If somebody has taken advantage of you and made you feel less than, his love will overshadow you. And every pothole, crack, crevice, damage, he will fill it with his glory as if you were never abused. As if you were never taken advantage of. All of a sudden, it used to matter that you got even doesn't matter anymore. Right. It used to matter that I got the apology I deserve. It doesn't matter anymore because greater is he that's living inside of me. He's greater than the apology I need. He's greater than the person I thought was going to heal me. I just realized they don't even come close to what I feel. Even if they did their best to fix it, I'd rather this feeling I have right now than for another person to come and try to hook me up with some solution. There is a place in your heart where God wants to overwhelm until you can't speak anymore. When the glory of God hits strong, you cannot speak because it overtakes you. Now, we are the temple of the living God. Nobody can, can house the Spirit of God Unless it's a child of God. Look at your neighbor and tell her, congratulations. congratulations. You qualify. <laughs> you qualify. You qualify to have the spirit of God in you. you, what, what, you and you know what happens when you got the spirit of God? You have no limits. There are no limits on you. Joshua was chasing his enemy. And he was filled with the spirit of God because he wanted to do what's right by God and by his people. And he looked at the sun and told the sun to stop until he chased down all his enemies. And for a whole day. 
Now, what he didn't know, because he didn't have the scientific research, is that you can't tell the sun to stand still because the sun isn't moving, you are. So the earth stood still, even in a miscommunication, and he didn't say it right. Some of you are so concerned about saying it right and understanding everything right. And God is like, you know what he meant. Come on, somebody. Is there something in you that you need God to say, you know what she meant, do it. God will speak to the elements of the earth and say, you know what he meant. Move. You heard what my daughter said? Well, she didn't say it right. It doesn't work like that scientifically. You know what she meant. That's the power. That God can bend, listen to this now. Do you believe God can bend space and time for his children? Do you know that God can reverse curses? You know God can explain your past? All of this pain that is inexplicable. All this stuff, that, why am I keep going through this? Why do I keep going this in this nasty deja vu and these things that keep going back and back and back? No one can fix the past. But God can take you on a tour and explain things to you that people were trying to keep secrets. There are people in this room that the Lord has revealed family secrets and healed you by explaining things to you that other people could never explain or were too ashamed to say the truth. God will expose darkness to his children. He'll give you insight, revelation, pictures so you can see, oh, that's why auntie so-and-so is so messed up. He'll whisper to you, this is what happened at this age. Why? Because his love brings the spirit of prophecy. In Revelation, it tells us that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When you start to believe in his name and in who he is, all of a sudden there's a spirit of prophecy that connects you to the spirit of truth. And when that truth comes, nothing could ever bind you. Because the truth is so freeing, isn't it? You don't have to wonder who you are. Truth has told you who you are. Only a fool would go backwards to believe lies again. I want you to stand to your feet. I want us to pray together. I want us to uh, praise and worship team. Let's bring up that song, Holy Spirit. As we get ready for baptism. Those of you who have been baptized already. You're walking in a new list of life. And God wants you to take it to the next level. See, demons, they don't care how they get in. They just want you to leave a door open. They'll take you even if it's a back door. If they got to sneak into the house through crawling in somewhere. But the Spirit of God comes in through the front door. Spirit of God asks for permission. Can I dwell inside of you? Jesus, when he went to heal, he would ask them, will you be made whole? He comes in through the front door. How many need the Lord to come in through the front door? So Lord, come, come Jesus, come. Bow your head and close your eyes. I want you to ask the Lord to come. Come Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I need you in this moment. I need you to come and stir this water. Stir the water for your sons and daughters that are gonna get baptized today. Fill the room with your atmosphere and your love grace upon grace fill the atmosphere Lord fill the atmosphere Lord if there be anyone here who's sinning let their sins be forgiven in the name of Jesus we come before you look out and we lay our burdens down we lay down at your feet all of our mistakes all of our shortcomings we lay it at the altar right now 
and we replace a spirit of heaviness with a spirit of freedom. I pray for anyone who is bound, bound in vices, bound in habits, bound in behaviors, tortured by the past, unsatisfied by the present, anxious about the future, worried about some issues that have not been figured out yet. The Spirit of the Lord is here right now to comfort the uncomfortable, to bring peace in the middle of your storm, to transform things that are trying to stay the same, situations that are stuck, habits that keep you in circles. All these things can be broken by the power of His Spirit. Fill, Lord God, fill, 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 fill. Fill this place. Fill this place. Somebody's hungry for the word. Somebody's hungry for the spirit. Somebody's developing an appetite for worship. Developing an appetite for praise. Developing an appetite for righteousness. We got to stay hungry, Lord. We need to stay hungry. Hallelujah. This appetite, let it not go away. For if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, that's all we need. We got to be hungry. We got to be hungry. We got to be hungry. I'm hungry for you, Lord God. I'm hungry for you, Lord. Doesn't make any sense to the rest of the world. Doesn't make any sense to the scientific community, but I'm hungry, Lord. I'm hungry for something that I haven't seen, but I believe in with all of my heart. I'm hungry because I got no choice. I got a family that's waiting on me. I got a destiny that needs to happen. I have a whole life that you have commanded to manifest. And now, Lord God, I'm hungry for you. I need to know how to do it right. I'm tired of doing it the wrong way. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. Even though I'm messed up in certain areas, even though it doesn't look like I'm all right, but I'm still hungry. Hallelujah. I might be judged by some folks, called crazy by some others, but I'm still hungry, Lord. I haven't done all the math right, and I haven't crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, but I'm still hungry. And somehow you let me be hungry. Even though I'm not 100% right, I'm still hungry. Stay hungry until everything wrong turns right. Stay hungry until every vice has to let you go under the power of the Holy Ghost. Stay hungry until the glory of God descends on your mind. Stay hungry until every ounce of darkness is rebuked out of your life. Stay hungry for righteousness until you are filled in every crack and every crevice of your life. Our first up is our sister Rachel. She gave her gave her life to the Lord and I don't know, sister, there's any anything you want to say? I wanna say that God loves you. He's all you need in life, and he has a purpose for you. That's good. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, Pastor Murley is going to do the, the honors today. Amen? Well, you, no, your shoulder's no good. Okay. <laughs> All right, sis. Hold my, oh, my hand right here. And then you, you bend at the knees and then we'll go down, okay? Father, we pray, Lord God, for our sister. We bless you, Lord God. We bless you. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that is about to happen in her life. As onlookers, we're not just spectators, but we are supporters. We give her, in this moment, our most highest respect for the decision that she has made to let the past go. All things are made new. It doesn't matter what happened in the past, but that person is dead. And this is going to be a burial ground and a delivery room at the same time. 
the old will be passed away sins will be forgiven and when she comes out of this water she'll be washed by the blood of the lamb and a covenant will be established over her life as the Lord has promised those who believe and are baptized will be saved she will no longer look at death as a problem because death has been conquered the grave will have no hold on her but on this day Lord God she not only inherit, inherit eternal life but a whole new family we thank you Lord God for what you're doing in her life and we pray for support strengthen her give her boldness boldness that she never had before to make decisions that she's never had to do before but you will give her Lord God power that she never thought she had we pray Lord God that she may have the faith to go along with the power and we Lord God give her our support we believe in better things coming in her life and we can't wait to see the testimony that comes of the future that you have in her and we pray Lord God that she may manifest all the gifts of the Spirit for I believe Lord God many gems and treasures are hidden inside your daughter our sister Rachel because you have believed in Lord Jesus Christ today we baptize you in Jesus name Sister Lisa, is there anything that you want to share? I just want to thank God for bringing me back home. Amen. It's good to be back home. Amen. Ain't nothing better than the holiday season to come back home. Amen. That's what everybody looks forward to, we're coming back home. Let's extend our hands and let's pray for our sister Lisa that the Lord will solidify something very powerful in her life. Father, I pray, Lord God, for your gift of love inside of her. I believe, Lord God, she believes in the comfort, Lord God, of belonging. And I pray that that spirit that is in her, that she may display to others. That the same way, Lord God, you have led her home, that she may lead others home. Give her, Lord God, the grace to do the calling that you have over her life. We bless her, Lord God. We respect her decision today. We know, Lord God, it's a long time coming. But on this day, angels rejoice because one sinner comes to repentance. And we are rejoicing, Lord God, together with our sister in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Lisa, because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ today, we baptize you in Jesus' name. it we got a family member that's going to be baptized today amen uh, anyone here to see uh, Jasmine get baptized you can come on this side and take pictures Jasmine, did you send out invitations to your baptism? (laughs) 
Uh, Jasmine, is there anything you want to say? because I love God and Jesus and I want to spread the gospel. Uh, Jasmine has been after us for a while to get baptized. Yeah, but we kind of held her back. I don't know why we thought it was a good idea, but uh, the Bible says Jesus had told the disciples, forbid not the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. If we don't receive the gospel and receive the Lord as a child, we don't have a chance. It is the innocence. And she has not changed her position. And, and I believe God's going to bless her for it for, for two years consistently. When I'm going to get baptized, when again get baptized. Uh, but I believe that she, Jasmine, is going to be a product of our love, of being grown up in an environment where people believe in Christ. And when that happens, fears don't exist in our children because they'll never see failure because the possibility for victory is always there. So Jasmine, we welcome you and we respect your decision today. You're shorter than most of us, but it doesn't matter because you're going to be a giant on the inside. The Bible tells us that heaven rejoices for one sinner that comes to repentance. And maybe you don't have a lot to repent of. But when people get saved, they get saved because they believe in Jesus, not because they repented from bad things. So you're going to have a whole life to do good things and some mistakes. But God is going to be with you always. And the family that he has given you here not only starts with your immediate family, but everyone else who calls Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right. Our sister Jasmine Moran, because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, today we baptize you in Jesus' name. We're going to leave uh, the certificate up and we'll take this out of the way so the family can take a picture in front of the certificate for memories because that little one, you can't see it from far. Uh, amen. Let's close in prayer for what the Lord is, has done today. If you are here and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is your day. As we leave, don't leave without Jesus. Fill, leave this place filled with the opportunity that God has given you. I know most of you have already seen the Lord, but I want to pray this prayer with you. Father, I pray that all those who have made their mind up to follow you, that they may receive you in, your, in their hearts and open up their minds to you. Perhaps someone is watching and they're wondering, how come I haven't gotten baptized and, and where's my level of commitment? The doors are open. If we have to baptize every Sunday, we will. It doesn't bother us. It's not a problem to us. It's a pleasure, Lord God, to do it. If heaven rejoices over one sinner that comes to repentance, then we will three times rejoice because we can see and feel them. And so, Father, we bless you, Lord, for all that you are about to do in this place. 
I feel, Lord God, someone's watching online that needs to hear Jesus loves you. And he has never forgotten about you. And you have been on his mind. And that's why you have come on and seen this. That it doesn't matter what age you are. Somebody, perhaps the Lord called you from little and you lost the opportunity. But he's calling you back home today. And it doesn't matter how many years have passed. The doors of salvation are open. The doors of heaven are open today. Heaven is receiving souls this very moment. So, Father, I pray, Lord God, for all those that are watching. And I pray that you may listen and agree with this prayer. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart. Come into my life again and make me whole. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you are the son of man and that you came to save and that you have all power in your hand. And I know that you rose again and you gave your life as a ransom so that I can be free. And on this moment, I cancel all contracts with any other spirit and I cling onto your Holy Spirit that I may be free once and for all. And on this day forward, I will follow you all the days of my life. Father, for those who have prayed that prayer, I pray, Lord God, that your spirit may be with them, to heal them, to grow them, to bless them, that their hearts, oh God, may never be empty, but instead they will start this journey to fulfillment. I pray, Lord God, for all of us, Lord God, that as we can continue, that we may have a wonderful week ahead of us. I pray, Lord God, for strength and for production and for efficiency, that all the things that we have done, that we may perfect them, especially be perfected in love. I pray, Lord God, for all of our businesses. I pray, Lord God, for all of our endeavors, our jobs, our health, and our family, that during this season, Lord God, that you may protect us, protect those that are traveling with traveling mercies, and protect those, Lord God, that are hosting families. Give them the grace to do so, that we may continue to spread the gospel and the love of Jesus wherever we go. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you, everybody.